first, thank you so much for letting me be here today. And I'm really excited that you guys are out to build a city. Because building a city is really important. And what you do at the very, very beginning will really make a difference in how your city plays out and how it grows. In Fort Collins, we are so lucky that we had some really smart people here like 100 years ago that put some things in place that we're still using today and that have made Fort Collins what it is. And when you're talking about what a city needs, um, you guys are spot on. First of all, your city needs to, to function. So you do, you need water and you need roads. And then you need your city to be safe. So you need clean water and you maybe need traffic lights on those roads and you probably need some policemen and some firemen and people just to help keep it safe. And once you have that, and you talked about this, do you want an ice cream shop or do you need an ice cream shop? Once your city works and once it's safe, then we can start talking about how pretty do we want to make it? Or what are some of the um, additional things, like a park? It's great to have parks, but we don't have to have parks. But it's really nice to have parks. So then we can start deciding what we want to put on top of that. And it's nice to do all those big things all together because if I had to just always go get my own water and was building my own pipe from the water source to my house and then you had to go build your own pipe from the water source to your house, that would be a lot of work. So it's easier if we all do it together and we say we're going to build big pipes that bring all the water to all the houses so everyone doesn't have to do it individually all by themselves. So that's sort of the baseline. And with that, I'll, I'll take some questions. How do you decide what land is used for? So all over the city, if you picture the whole city of Fort Collins, and the city of Fort Collins is about 53 square miles. I don't know how big your city is going to be. But we have 53 square miles. And we decide that in one area, we want to have um, mostly just a single family house. And in another area, we want to have a school. And in another area, we want to have places where people go to work or places where people shop. And so we try to spread out the areas of town where we're going to put all those things. And included in those decisions are what kind of housing. So in some areas, you'll see maybe in your neighborhoods, it's almost all houses with front yards and backyards and maybe you have a fence and, and that's what you see. And in other neighborhoods, and maybe this is your neighborhood, you might have um, houses that are side by side, a duplex, or you might have a house that has four houses in it or a, a triplex, we call that multifamily or an apartment. And so we designate where different types of housing can go. And that's just a decision that sort of has to be to be made and we try to make things a little bit uniform so that they flow together really well. How do we get food to our town? How do we get food to our town? So our town, like other towns, used to be much more rural. It used to be a lot of farms. Farms, farms, farms. Farms where the mall is. Is this area called Nelson Farms, this neighborhood area? So it used to be a farm. Um, and that's how we used to get food into our town. Now we have fewer farms, although we are growing a lot of local food. But for people to get food, it's got to be able to come in either on the roads or on the train or on a bus. Um, maybe some food comes on a plane to Denver and then it gets driven up here. But I would say the common denominator is we, we need roads to get our food here. What happens if we run out of space. If we run out of space. So I told you that the city of Fort Collins is that 53 square miles. So we made a decision. People, our, our uh, elected officials, that's who runs the city, they made a decision that Fort Collins was going to be that big and not any bigger. So we actually will run out of space. So when you run out of space, that's when we start getting taller and we get a little, it's called denser. So if you all, if we were a new city and you guys represented everyone in the city, you might spread out and take up this whole gym and you could move around and not hit anyone.
But as we run out of space and more and more people come, we get a little tighter and tighter, and you just don't get to spread out quite so much. So we'll see buildings that get taller when we run out of space. We'll see more um, of the apartment kind of living. We won't have as many um, houses that maybe have a backyard as big as this gym. They'll just get a little smaller. What if we disagree about building something? What if we disagree about building something? You know what? We disagree about building things all the time. Uh, you might have even heard of that CSU stadium, right? People disagree on whether we should build that or not. Yeah, so, so we disagree as a community on a lot of things. And so we need a process where everyone gets to be heard, no one gets yelled at, or no one is told that their idea is stupid and wrong. We have a process where everyone gets to talk about what they want to build where. And then we have some sort of um, method of making those decisions. And so in Fort Collins, we actually have what's called a land use code. And it's a big book of rules. And it actually says what can be built where, to some degree. It doesn't totally define it has to be this or it has to be that. But that land use code will say, I own this piece of property here, and then I can look and see what it says, and it'll say, here are all the different things you can possibly build here, and here are all the things you can't build here. So we've at least decided somewhat what can and can't. And then we have that gray area where we do have to have a process and a lot of conversation to decide, um, is it okay to build it, or do we not want to build it? But we need a process because we don't want to we don't want to pick and choose. People need to understand the rules way ahead of time. We can't just decide each time someone says, here's my idea, and we go, well, OK, yes for you. And then someone else comes and we say, no, not for you. We need to have really clear rules so that people know what they can and can't build. OK. What happens if the landfill runs out of space? If the landfill runs out of space. How many people recycle? Do you recycle at your house? Yes. That's good. That's going to help us not run out of space at the landfill. But you know what? We will run out of space. It's, it will happen. So this is where I talked about, um, you know, 100 years ago, we had some really great planners who were thinking. So the county, it's actually the county that runs the landfill and not the city. But a lot of cities do run their landfill, so you'll have to decide if that's something you want to do. They knew how long the landfill would last, and so they've actually already bought other property, and they bought it a long time ago when it was still available, so there aren't neighborhoods built out around it, because no one wants to live right on top of a landfill, so you want to pick a good location for it, and you need to, to set that aside really, really early on. It's almost the same thing for um, if you decide you want parks, you're gonna need to get that land really early before someone else comes in and builds houses where you wanted to put your park. So you have to kind of invest up front and think about where it makes sense to put things, like a landfill, like a park, like a school, um, and think about where you're gonna need those things as your city grows. How do you work together to plan a city? Together to plan a city. How do you work together to plan a city? Um, that is, a good, that is a really, really good question. So you have to decide um, how you want to do it. So I can tell you how the city of Fort Collins decided to do it. They decided on a form of government where we have elected officials that represent the whole city. There are seven of them. And they ultimately get to vote and decide. But they have to listen to what the people say and what the people want to make that decision. And so we're always, even if we're the elected officials or even if we're the planning department and we're making the rules, we have to go out to everyone in the community and say, do you like these rules? Is this how we want to build? What do we want to do? We do that all the time. We have to ask people, do you want a new recreation center, and should it have a pool or should it have tennis courts? And we ask the people, what, what do you want to have there? And we ask people, we're going to build a road here. 
Do we want to put big bike lanes on the sides of it? So, you know, is that something that's important to everyone? And then we decide and work together that way. How do we make sure everyone has enough water? Enough water. I would say this is a question that should be asked first. Because if there's no water, we all know, you got to have water to have any kind of life. So we want to make sure we have water. So how do we make sure there's enough? Um, well, you want to plan your city near a source of water. So you're going to want to figure out where your water's coming from. You want to make sure that supply of water is enough. So we have the Poudre River, right? And we have Big Thompson Canyon and the water there. And then as your city grows, you need to say, how much water is it going to take and do we have that amount? So there's some math involved. You're going to need some people that are good at math and good at projections. It takes a lot of different skills to build a city. Lots and lots of different skills. And then if, if your water maybe gets scarce, so we have droughts every now and then and California is having a big drought right now, then you want to build um, Technology, for one, again, we need some scientists to tell us how can we reuse and recycle and use less water and develop a washing machine that uses less water. But we also want to get our, all of our citizens involved so that they turn the faucet off while they're brushing their teeth. They don't um, just let the hose run on the sidewalk. You want, to, you want to almost train your community to use water really wisely, because that will help ensure that you're going to have enough water. What do we do if lots of people move to town all at once? All at once. We're kind of seeing that in Fort Collins right now. We're having a lot of people move here. So what do we do? We try to think about this when we very, very first build our city. It's easy to think, oh, it's just us right here right now, and everything's working fine for us. But we have to think bigger and say, OK, what if five times the number of us in this room were suddenly in this room. What would change and what would we need? And think about that in the long term so that you have enough housing, so that your roads are wide enough, so that um, you have enough fire hydrants so that you can protect all those, so that you have enough police, because if it only took one police officer with us here, you know, if we add twice as many, we might need a few more. So we need to plan for what's it going to take if we were to get much, much bigger. And so we're seeing a little of that. How many people get frustrated every now and then if you're out riding around in a car with your parents and it just feels like you're stuck in traffic? That's kind of the result. That's a result of a lot of things, but part of it is the result of we've got a lot of people moving here and a lot more people on the roads. How will we survive if there's a really bad storm and we don't have anywhere to go? A really bad storm and we don't have anywhere to go. Um, this is a good question and you want to know the answer to this question before the storm comes. And we've seen that. We've had flooding here. Uh, Windsor had a tornado a few years ago. So we have had some um, big storms. And so we need a plan in place because we never really know where it's going to go. You know how you guys practice fire drills at school? It's very similar. You want to have an emergency plan that's going to say, OK, and here's an example. We had those big floods, and it washed all the ash from the High Park fire into the Poudre River, and that is our drinking water. And all that ash, we didn't want to send it to our water treatment plant because it would muck up all the systems, and it could break it all. So we, had to have, we always have to have a plan that says, if we can't get water from the Poudre River, where are we going to get the water from? And we need a plan that says, or we need to work with other people, so it's not always the city. We need to know that we have Red Cross. So if my home burns down, there's someone there to say, I know what to do. We're going to put you up here for the night, and you're going to sleep here, and we're going to find you clothes from here and we're gonna have a system to communicate it. So we just need to think ahead of time of, if we have a bad storm, what's the best way to tell people where to go? How do we make sure we keep roads open? And how do we make sure we have water and ideally electricity? 
How do we get um? How do we get food? How do we get food? I think the roads are really important for that. The roads and encouraging, you know, in Fort Collins, we encourage a lot of um, local food. So people to make and grow food locally so that if we can't get food in, we still have food here. Where does our city get money to pay for things? So let's talk about how, we f how we're going to pay for everything that we're going to do. So we, have to, we, have, we know we have to build some roads. We know we need to get water to houses, and we need to get electricity to houses, um, and we need to pay for police officers. So these are all things that we need to pay for. And since we all live here and everybody's benefiting, everybody's going to chip in. So we have taxes. They're called taxes. And you pay a little piece of tax on every single thing you buy, except medicine. We don't tax medicine. So you're going to pay a tax, and we collect all that tax. And some of our tax is called dedicated. So we have a street maintenance tax. So that money can only be used to improve the streets. And we have money that pays for natural areas. So big open spaces around the city. That money can only be used for that. And the people in the community get to vote and decide what they want their taxes spent on. So the only way people don't pay it is if everyone leaves the town and then we just don't have that many people buying stuff and so then we don't have as much money to run our city. How do you like plan out the city? How do we plan out the city? So you want your roads to make sense, right? We don't want a lot of like diagonal crisscross. We don't want dead ends, right? Dead ends are hard. You want people to be able to, to get to where they want to go. And then you want to decide um, where you want your houses. And you don't want everyone in, in a neighborhood that has to drive clear to the other side of town to go to a grocery store, right? So we probably want a few different sort of grocery stores so that people don't have to go so far. And maybe they don't have a car. So you want people to be able to walk or ride their bike to a grocery store or to um, a school. So you want to kind of spread things out and decide how do we provide kind of a little community within the bigger community. So where I live in my neighborhood, I can, and I don't live in this part of town, but I have a store I can get to to buy food. There's a gas station I can get gas if I need. Um, there's a school there and my work is there. So you, we want to have places for people to live and to work and to play all over the city. We can't put all of our play stuff in one part of the city and all of our living in another part of the city and all of our um, food growing in one part of the city. We need to kind of spread those things out so that they make sense. How do you make electricity? How do you make electricity? Did I mention you're going to need some scientists? Because I don't know how you make electricity. But I do know that there are people that do know how to make electricity. And you need them. I do know, too, that to get the electricity, it takes a lot of wires to run everywhere. And you have to decide. So here's something Fort Collins decided to do. We decided to put all of our electricity underground. Maybe you visit other friends or grandparents and other communities and you see a lot of wires overhead. That's their electricity. All of our electricity is under the ground. And that is really helpful when, who asked about the big storms and the tornadoes and the flooding? It's really nice because our electricity stays on most of the time because it doesn't, those poles don't get blown over and squirrels don't get up there and short them out. Having it underground means our electricity is on like 98% of the time. So that's something to think about. But you have to think about if you put all your roads in and then you want to put all your water and your electricity in underground, you're going to have to dig your roads back up. So there's kind of an order that you, in which you want to build your city. 
You might want to start with everything that's going to go way underground that just needs to be protected, like water or our showers or when we flush the toilet, where does that water go? All those pipes and that stuff probably needs to go in before you build your road on top of it. How do we make bricks? How do we make bricks? So the city actually doesn't make any bricks. We buy a lot of bricks from a brick maker. So your community is hopefully going to be made up of really diverse people with really different interests and different skills. And you're going to have a brick maker that wants to live here. And you're going to have a, um, talked about the ice cream maker who wants to live here. And we're going to have someone that fixes bikes that wants to live here. So we want to build a city where a lot of different people with a lot of different skills want to live. And then we'll have a place to get the bricks. What if our city doesn't have any jobs? That happens to some towns, or jobs go away. So it's really important to think about why would people want to have their business in our town? Because again, you want to attract those people with all their different skills. So in Fort Collins, a lot of businesses come here because we have really good water, and we have a lot of it. So, and I don't really know a lot of this, but like the HPs and Agilents and those high-tech businesses, those businesses take a lot of water and they want really reliable electricity. So they want to be in Fort Collins because our electricity is underground and we have a lot of really good water. So they come here. We have a lot of businesses that come here because they have employees that like to be outside. And so we have a lot of bike trails and hiking trails, and we have the river, and we have fun things to do. So those businesses that can maybe go to any town and take their jobs to any town, they want to be here because of um, what we call the quality of life. So that's sort of at the top of what you want to build in your city is having a good quality of life, because then there will be jobs here. Why does our city need a lot of laws? bills and laws, and we call them ordinances sometimes. Um, we need them because we need to have the rules be very clear. So if we decide as a group that it's not OK to kick people, or it's not OK to steal something out of someone else's desk, we're going to write that down so that people know, and we're going to make it official and say, this is not OK in our community. And so that's why we need to kind of have um, the laws and the rules and the bills, because we want everyone to understand the rules of the game. And then if someone breaks the rules of the game, then they're not surprised, or they shouldn't be surprised, when the police come and say that wasn't OK, or when, um, again, even back to the building, we say, no, here are the rules. You can't build a 23-story skyscraper right downtown. Those are our rules. So that's why we write them down and make them official. You can also look at, so the very first document the city created was our charter. So we have a city charter that lays out our whole structure of how we're going to make decisions. Because before you can make a rule, you have to know who's, what the process is to make the rule. So that's the charter. And the charter will say, here's how we're going to make the rules. And then we do have a lot of rules you can look at. And those rules are things like, I mentioned the land use code. And then we have our city code. We have a traffic code. We have a whole code just to talk about how to operate on our streets, whether you're in a car or on a bike or on foot even. Traffic code addresses all of those rules. How do we get water? How do we get water? Well, we need to find a source. We need to make sure that we have access to that source, that we're not taking someone else's water. And then we need great big pipes in the ground 
all the way through the city, and then we need little pipes off the big pipes to go to every household so that your sink works and my sink works and anyone in any house so that they actually have the water there. How much shelter do we need? Well, how much room do you have? So we have to decide how much room do we have to make our city? And probably a hundred years ago, when Fort Collins started, they probably didn't really know. They probably just sort of said, we have these few streets and we have the river and we know we have to get the water here. But then they just thought ahead for how much space. And then you wanna have enough room for houses. But then again, you have to think way out and think how big could your city possibly get and how do we accommodate that? And then you'll have some idea of how much. How do you get the land? Hopefully you're there first and you get the land. Um, so the city doesn't own all the land. This, this is actually a, a really good point and I hadn't thought of it. So the city do, doesn't own all the land. We don't own your house and we don't own the land underneath it and we don't own the school and we don't own the land underneath it. What we did was we drew a boundary around a big piece of land that a lot of different people own different things in and then as a community we made the rules to say what could be built on the land and what could go where. So you probably don't own the land, but you're going to govern the land. That makes sense. That's a really good distinction. How do we protect ourselves? Really good question. So in most cities, right, we choose to use police. And we set police rules, and we say also what the police can and can't do. And then um, fire is really important. So we want to protect ourselves from fire. So you have to decide what you want to be protected from and how you want to do that. You know, here's a really interesting thing about Fort Collins. We, the, the water treatment plant originally and flowing through town and the water pipes, those were not put in for drinking water. They were put in to protect us from fire. The very first time we built infrastructure, it was more about protection because at that point, all the water was good. They didn't have to treat it. But then we started getting germs in the water and we had to treat for that. And so that became for drinking water. But originally around the city, because there were some really big fires early, early on, all that infrastructure and those pipes for water was there for fire, not for drinking. That's how our city evolved. Thank you. Thank you guys, you asked such good questions. And you know, our city's so old, it's been a long time that I've ever thought about if we were starting from scratch, what would we need to do? So this is a great exercise.